This video is about outliers. Outliers are examples that do not appear to fit with the rest of the example set data. They are often obvious by inspection, other times less so. They arise usually because of errors or mistakes in the data gathering process, and so it's important to have a systematic way of detecting them, so a decision can be taken about what to do with them. Uh, RapidMind offers some outlier detection methods. So we'll cover the Detect Outlier Distances operator, which has three important parameters. These are number of neighbors, number of outliers, and distance function. Then we'll look at the Detect Outlier Density operator, which has distance and proportion parameters. And then finally, we'll look at the Detect Outlier LOF, which stands for Local Outlier Factor operator. Uh, this has minimal points lower and minimal points upper bound parameters. So okay, as usual we have some data. Details don't matter. The data is created here and is passed to each of the detect outlier operators in turn. De detect outlier distances, detect outlier densities and detect outlier LOF, local outlier factor. Let's quickly look at the data. So it's very simple. Um, you can see here I'm plotting attribute 1 against attribute 2. If we just look at the data here, attribute 1, attribute 2, there's a source column, ignore that. Attribute 1 and attribute 2, simple numerical real and racked attributes. And actually what's happening here is that they're two Gaussian clusters separated by a small amount. Shows that NASA on the advanced view here. OK, if I now, we'll go now to the first detect outlier function, sorry, the first detect outlier operator. That will just run the whole process. So let's look at the detect outlier distances operator first. It takes parameters, number of neighbors, number of outliers and distance function. So dealing with the number of outliers first, this is a, a number. This is the number of outliers it will always find. So it will always find, in this case, 25 outliers. The distance function is set to Euclidean distance. There are a number of these. We'll look at these briefly, but the this is essentially a mathematical way of finding a distance between points. The number of neighbors parameter that's the number, that is the um, kth neighbor that it's going to use when it's determining whether a point is an outlier. Basically what it does, it looks at each of the points one by one, considers the distances from each of the points to the kth nearest neighbor, the, what, the first in this setting here, and the ones that have the largest distances are considered to be outliers. The distance function in this case is Euclidean distance. So if I run that, I should pause the video. Okay, so it's finished running. So detect outlier distances, these are the results. Now what's happened is that a new column, a new attribute has been added. It's called outlier. If we look at the statistics view, it's of type outlier, and it's either true or false. And it, as you can see, there are 25 true, which is the number we expected in the parameter that's called number of outliers, and there are 2,000 left that are false. If we plot the data, this is an advanced plot view of that data, and I've coloured the point in based on whether it's an outlier or not. OK, so you can see what it's done is it's considered each of the points in turn, calculated the distance from it, the point to the, the first nearest neighbour, and it's ranked all of those distances in order, and those which are furthest away become outliers. OK. If I change the number of neighbours to 2 and run it again, will observe something happening to uh, one of the 
two of the data points rather just show you quickly what we're expecting to see is those points there currently not outliers when I run it again it'll change the reason being now it's going to consider the not the nearest neighbor but the second nearest neighbor so those two points are themselves look like they both could be outliers but because they're close to one another the first nearest neighbor rule means that they don't become outliers okay so going back to the data if I plot it again now if you remember those two data points were blue previously they were not outliers now they are outliers because the first nearest neighbor rule means that those are now those now no longer as it were cancel each other out in terms of outlier status the second nearest neighbor is sufficiently far away now for both of those to be counted as an outlier so essentially what this means is that the parameter number of neighbors if you set that low outliers are detected which might be more noisy it's more susceptible to noise so you generally increase that now let's think about um, the uh, distance function so if we go back to the, the plot of the results basically uh, Euclidean distance is it's the difference between the attributes for each pair of points squared summed and then the square root of that is taken so we can do a worked example actually for this point here and this point here so we can see attribute 1 is 0 0.012 and attribute 2 is 0.945 for that point and we can see for this point it's attribute 1 is 0.42 and attribute 2 is 0.985 if we do the Euclidean distance calculation we essentially subtract 0 0.012 from 0.42 which is about 0.4 something square it and we get 0.166464 you can do the sum yourself we also do 0.945 subtract 0.985 square that and the answer is 0.0016 we add 0.0016 to 0.166464 and take the square root of that and it's about 0.41 so in other words the Euclidean distance between that point and that point is 0.41 and you can see that that's about right because these are just about on the same attribute 2 line so it's you can see it's 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 so I beg your pardon 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and a bit take away a bit it's about 0.41 roughly you can see if it were if it was just a dead straight line along that attribute 2 axis so Euclidean distance is, is sort of quite intuitive there are other distance functions so square distance I now I haven't checked the code but I suspect that's just the same as Euclidean distance without the computational overhead of the final square root cosine distance that is that's actually I think that's the similarity rather than the distance so points on the diagonal tend to be close to one another if I rerun this now with the distance function set to cosine distance we'll tend to see that points very close to the diagonal will become outliers which is very difficult to understand um, but it's a feature of points on the diagonal that they are close to one another by virtue of their um, projection being close to essentially one I suppose um, and but look at the, yeah so you can see here <laughs> uh, basically those points are on the diagonal so difficult to difficult to have intuition about what that means um, but if you change it to inverted cosine distance that's much more I think the angle between points so if I run it again with that okay and this time 
Now it's coloured outliers in which are essentially at a greater angle from one another. And this is this one is a very large angle from this one, for example. So that's more sort of intuitive. Um, and I think angle here is a similar thing. But anyway, the basic point about this operator is it always detects this number of outliers. So it's useful during exploratory data analysis, but you might find that during production you would probably not want to use this because it always gives you a number of outliers, whether there are any or not. So this is, you know, take care when using this in real life, because if you suddenly decide that you have some unseen test data and you think they should be outliers, then you might just delete them. If they're not actually outliers, then that might be an error. OK, so let's look at detect outlier densities. Now, the general rule is on this one. Um, the um, distance parameter, as that tends to zero, you get more outliers. As the proportion parameter tends to one, you get fewer outliers. Best way to explain it is to run it. So if I set my distance to 0 0.2 and my proportion to 99%, it's between 0 and 1, I run that. Look at this. So now this is the advanced view of the same data with if you recollect the distance of 0.2, proportion 0.99. So the way to think of this is if for a given point 99% of the other of the data points are greater than 0.2 away using the distance function, whatever one you select, I've selected Euclidean distance, then the point itself is an outlier. So you can see as you increase that distance, i.e. if distance was 0.3, then you'd be, there would be fewer outliers. If you reduce the distance, more outliers. If you decrease the proportion from 1, more outliers will be included. Let me just illustrate that. I'll change this to 0 0.05 and I'll change the proportion to 0.95. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now looking at the plot again, now it's something very different has happened. Most of the points are outliers now. A very small number inside the core of these clusters, I guess, are regarded as not outliers. So I think I've got the parameters wrong. <laughs> I'll change that to point 0.1. Try that. So this time, well, that's a bit more believable, I suppose. This time, most of the points are not outliers, and the ones outside the edges are. Very neat, it is too. But the, the important point is that, in general, this operator isn't guaranteed to find outliers, outliers. And it's extremely sensitive to the actual relative distances between points. So clearly, if you don't normalize your data, or if you don't understand the normalization that you've applied, then this distance will be wrong, depending on what you have. So clearly, this operator is very sensitive to normalization. So next, the last one we'll look at is the local outlier factors. This this one takes two parameters, basically the minimal points lower bound and minimal points upper bound. And again, it, I guess it counts. It must measure the distances between the upper and lower bound points, and it essentially comes up with some sort of average distance which I guess it uses as sort of a density measure. And anyway, all the points then are assessed like that, and the ones with the lowest density are counted as outliers. But this operator is different because it doesn't return a true or false. Instead, it returns a number. And the higher the number, the more likely the point is to be an outlier. So if I run that again with 5 and 10 as my two points here. OK, so now this time. This is the um, LOF output, and now much more exciting picture. In fact, if we look at the data, at 1, at 2, outlier has now been filled in. Looking at the data, you can see it's uh, it varies between a, a minimum and a maximum. The 
higher this number, the more the point is an outlier. So if we look at the plot of that, you can see what I've done is I've coloured the points in and made them bigger based on the outlier um, value returned by the operator. So blue points, small blue points are not outliers and big red points are outliers. So you can sort of see intuitively it's done quite a nice job of giving you an indication of where outliers are, which is nice, very nice looking. And you can see these ones seem to be close together, so it's made them a bit bluer. So it's quite nice. If I change this to 1 and run it again. OK, now look at the plot. Now it's very different. Now because my min was 1, essentially now it's very susceptible to noise. So it's finding outliers and size clusters and so on. So that's the general rule. You have to make the minimal points lower bound larger to make the uh, operator less susceptible to noise. Okay, so well, I'll just leave this then with a. I'll change this to five, and I'll leave it at ten, and run it one more time. Uh, by the way, the upper bound seems to have a small effect on the range. So I'll run this one more time while we're waiting. The the LOF LOF operator, as I say, it doesn't produce a true or false. So in general, what you have to do is you have to look and compare the result it outputs with a threshold, which of course there is no hard and fast rule about the actual absolute value of that. You always have to tune that with whatever data you have. Okay, so here's, here's the final picture. So it's such a nice picture, I thought I'll just leave it like that. And what I'll do is I'll just go back and forwards between that, the statistics view, and the data.